AMD's RX 10,000 series or AMD's AI series or whatever AMD is going to call it is about to come to life. All we know right now is that Lisa Su will be arriving at CES 2026 for the event. It's going to have contain some AI announcements for what is going to be upcoming for 2026. It sounds pretty promising for the most part. AMD is great at listening to their customer base. If you weren't part of CES 2025 or you didn't follow the announcements, that is when they announced the NVIDIA 50 series earlier this year in January 2025. Jensen Huang was there himself, but now Lisa Su does want to answer. More than likely, it's going to not just contain just the AI side. They'll mention CPUs from Ryzen, Epic, and they'll mention GPUs such as Radeon and even their work GPUs. I do have to say, what does the RX 10,000 currently have? What's rumored in it? All we know with it is it's going to be obviously a high-end flagship device. If AMD does produce this GPU, you can certainly expect RDNA 5. They're already moving out of the RDNA 4 phase and moving on to RDNA 5. It would feature up to 96 compute units. Currently, as far as we know, they are pushing up to 12,000 cores, which is going to be a large improvement from its current predecessor. Up to 32 to 48 gigabytes of a VRAM. And will it feature G6X or G7 or maybe still standard G6? And for that, it is currently uncertain but hopefully they move on to G7 and that would certainly give it an advantage. So if you really compare it to something like the RTX 5090, these are the current rumors that are going on. And also I have to mention the power usage for the RX AI 100, just making up a name here, or maybe the RX Radeon 10,000 or something. It's going to feature up to 350 watts compared to the mega 580 watts the 600 watts that you get out of say the RTX 5090. So that's enough to get pretty hyped about it. Now path tracing wise, I do expect it to still be at least a generation behind as the 9000 series is still about two generations behind when it comes to path tracing. Before we start comparing the RTX 5090 and the 10,000 series, I do have to mention what we do officially know about CES 2026 when it comes with Lisa Su speaking at the highlight of the keynote, which is a very good sign. More than likely, she's going to talk about AI realistically. I can also see that they might not actually announce the GPUs or CPUs then, but we could see the possibility of a roadmap unless they're very enthusiastic about the RDNA 5 and hopefully it really is a Nvidia competitor. Pricing wise, we're obviously not going to be sure because pricing has been currently all over the place, but more than likely it's going to be about the same price as the RTX 5090 or even less depending on the specs. Now, if you were to compare a card like this with a RTX 5090, which is going to be the competitor, if the top flagship when it comes to Nvidia if it has really well over 12,000 cores, kind of competes because then currently with the RTX 5090, if you don't know, it has up to 21,000 ray tracing cores. So it's still a bit short, but then again, that is a rumor, who knows? Maybe AMD will certainly surprise us. Now, when it comes to the VRAM, they could really be neck and neck depending on the type of technology that they do use. If AMD does use G7, 32 gigabytes of G7, even goes up to say 48 gigabytes of G7, that would be quite incredible, but also a bit unrealistic. More than likely, we would see up to 32 gigabytes of G6 or G6X, which would sound a bit more like something AMD would do, but hopefully they prove me wrong. That would be pretty much neck and neck when it comes to Nvidia. This is where it's going to differ a bit is when it comes to the memory bus. It's also rumored that it might have up to a 384 bit bus. G6 or G6X, it's not going to obviously be quick as G7. When it comes to Nvidia, it's 32 gigabytes of G7 at 512 bit bus. That is going to be a large massive difference right then and there. There is a rumor that they may push it to 48 gigabytes. That would, well, be quite incredible. Now, when it comes to the clock speeds and the turbo speeds, we're 
not going to be quite certain with it. More than likely, you can expect a bit of a lower number compared to its Radeon 9070 XT, which is currently, say, at 2.8 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz. You would expect this card to be more around like maybe about 2.2 or 2.3 gigahertz would be more of the realistic range I would see for a Radeon RX 10,000 series. Allegedly, the cache can go up to 20 megabytes for L2 cache with the high-end Alpha Tradeon 3. Power consumption wise, again, 350 watts compared to a massive 600 watts. That's a big win when it comes to AMD. You're talking about half of the power you can get from AMD's card compared to Nvidia's. More than likely, you're also going to see a lot of talk about MPUs, and I wouldn't be surprised if AMD starts to utilize it onto their GPUs. For example, if you want to use your GPU not only just for gaming, but also using it for AI assistance, such as for local LLMs, which would be a really nice feature. This could take full advantage when it comes to fine tuning your system. It would tune your software as you're gaming, which would make a bit more sense. Soon, we'll find out exactly what Lisa Sue has up her sleeves. This could truly be the next revolution when it comes to RDNA 5. What would you hope to see out of an upcoming RDNA 5 GPU, especially if it's high end? Hopefully you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is interested in PCs and tech, make sure you share this video with them. And also, if you're not part of the big, wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And also make sure you follow my Discord, which is right here. And you can feel free to enter anytime. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to show your battle rigs because I love to see them. So make sure you follow my X handle right here as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. For anybody out there who loves to join lives or if you have a question you would love to ask, feel free to join in on Wednesdays and Saturdays when I go live and it officially it will be your hour to ask if you have any questions about PC builds. Thank you, fan bam, so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.